Thank you for tuning in to the Button Road Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are Pine Box Rock Shop in Bushwick, Brooklyn. We're back for the uh, Button Road video series. Yes. And uh, with, with, with us, uh, we have the uh, uberly talented filmmaker extraordinaire, Mr. Harry P. Sando. How you doing, sir? What up, what up, everybody? What's good, brother? What's good? What's good, y'all? We are, we are officially a part of Just Brooklyn now. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. I can't wait, yes, man. Bar Scott voice. Can't wait. This is our first time really venturing into something like, like film together. Yes, it is. I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Why you want to get into film? Like, what, what is your desire to get into film? I, you go first. I always liked writing as a kid. Like, like I even like writing today. I'm really lazy. And, like, I get the ideas in my head. And they stay up there. I just don't want to put them on paper because I'm too lazy to write. But uh, I always liked writing. Yeah, when I was I younger, I used to write like like because uh, I was always in like a uh, you know like a uh, zombie games and the horror films. So when I was younger, I'd get bored in school. I always had another notebook and I'd write like little slasher films. <laughs> like sick fuck. <laughs> it's films. funny. That's how a lot of people got that start. But now that I think about it, if I could find one of those books, I had like seven, eight. I feel. At least decent short slasher films that I wrote. I mean, when like he's brought up before, when when I started Sunday night screenings, I was stoned, bro. It wasn't like, it wasn't like I wanted to get into film. You stoned your way into the industry. I stoned my way <laughs> to the industry. <laughs> film. I smoked. I smoked you the small joint way. on West Eighth. I was going down to Gizzy's, and when I got there, it was the World Cup. And there was people, they had moved all the couches to the front. There was a bunch of people just watching the, the fucking World Cup there. And I'm in the back. <laughs> I'm in the back and I'm like, yo, I don't want to see this shit. I want to I I see a movie. So then that just kind of hit the light bulb. And I think it was that same day because I was there. I went there because I had played there like two, two days earlier. And that was my first time. I mean, I saw the dude in the, in the crowd and shit. I didn't know why he was eyeing me so hard. But it ended up being one of the owners of Gizzy's, Mark, who I became friends with. So he saw me, you know, he, he came up to me at Gizzy's and he was like, Bro, I saw your fucking set the other night. It was fucking insane, bro. And I was just like, Thank you. Gizzy. <laughs> Gizzy, bro. Big shout out to Mark and, and Gizzy's. So um, we ended up doing a shot together. Then I told him, I was like, Yo, y'all should be putting movies up here, man. Y'all shouldn't even be. You got a bunch of people, you know, they they watching soccer. What happens when soccer's not on TV no more? You just turn it off? He was like, why don't you uh, take one night and, and do it? Is that the real and accent? No, that's his, that's his. <laughs> we need to get him on. That's actual. That's the way he actually spoke. But um, they gave me the night. I put it together. I came up with the idea. At the cafe, I was just on Photoshop, just trying to put together three words or two words that sounded sexy and sounded like it was going to make people come out and I told them Sunday night screenings man and that's how it started but I'm watching people yo these people just coming in off the street I was getting people fucking in, in, in Maine nigga like Maine I don't even know anybody in Maine but they submit their film to a fucking cafe in, in yeah. the other city like yo one thing though man you gotta remember anything with New York on it sexy yeah New York is sexy and the location was Yo, mm. Yeah man I mean especially West 8th Yeah nigga. West 8th Over there by NYU My god So I, I don't wanna For lack of a better word New York's so culture rich yeah. And it's just put, There's like pocket twits And like an overabundance That shit was crazy <laughs> We I wanna get up on top I, though I give, yes. it, I give it six months Mess with me You know I got it We're at the, we're at the brink of success All of us Do you guys realize Absolutely, that? Absolutely man Yes but like I feel it, man. I don't think anybody's really gonna know when you finally get there. You think like people who were struggling for a minute, they actually knew when they actually when they finally made it. You think, I think you ever realized? Like, I think it's like the moment you realize. It's not like there's not like like once you hit, you realize. I think it's like just like there'll be like a moment like when you oh shit like damn. Like when people start like, like chasing you on the, uh, yeah. or you outside. Or, or you like start yeah. realizing. Yo, it's weird. But I said this is. You can think for so, you know, you can think for so long, oh, man, I'm still at the bottom, still at the bottom. But for, for my journey, it's so weird because I've accomplished so much. And, you know, other people would tell you, yo, 
do you know what you know who you are? Do you know what you've done? And in your brain, you're thinking, I ain't done nothing. What are you talking about? Like, like yo, you had, you know, you had that show that was on that was on Oprah. You, you know, you was you, you PA'd on this movie. You did this movie, and uh, this person knows you. And I'm like, dang. When you sit back and think for a second, you're like, dang. There are, right. there are moments when. <laughs> Uh, pe- well, well, I think that the, uh, the real thing is that people always that their own toughest critic. You always your own yeah. toughest critic. It's, w- it's with us. It's especially with us, like in the, it's, uh, by ourselves and together. With this, we're our own toughest critic. <laughs> uh, we we don't let off on ourselves. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's a lot of people that tell us, yo, like, do you realize like what you've done so far, what you've accomplished? And, like, it feels like we have, but. But I mean, there's, there's so many shows out now that are just crazy. Like I've seen this one show. Oh, can we bash shows on this? On this? On this? Oh, we do yeah, it all the man. time. Oh, okay, what? good. Then I can bash. Oh, what, what? First Family, I think it was. It's a show on, on TV called The First Family. The whack is crazy. That's not the one with Al Bundy, right? Uh, no, no, no. no. Oh, the it's First like Family a, is just. It's like it's supposed to be like that comedy shit. It's like some comedy show. Uh, I saw, I saw, I saw a tri- uh, that, trailer um, for it, and it looked funny. Yeah, it's not funny, man. It's like. If people talk about phonery, buffonery, and coonery and stuff like that, and this is it, man. Like it's a lot of ooneries, This is man. like it's a lot of ooneries. Like <laughs> seriously, because if you think Fuckery. Tyler Perry, if you think Tyler Perry is coonery and buffonery, oh man, this show is Tyler the epitome Perry, bro. of phonery. Oh, shit, it's everything. I, can't even, I, can't. I think Spike Lee should be all over this show. Like you need to put out a personal statement. They need to shut this show down. Cause it's stupid. <laughs> the writing sucks. I'm going on oh, air. Shit. I don't care if you hear this and you want to boycott me before I even get there. I'm African, so I can go skate. They're Africa. not gonna boycott you, bro. The show sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of terrible shows out right now. A lot. Um, like, like I thought it was a joke until I was flipping through my stations uh, a couple of days ago and I actually saw that uh, pregnant and dating show. So now oh, there are women that, that have gotten knocked up. <laughs> And, and they're going out on dates. Are going out on dates. I gotta defend it just a little bit, and I say, I say this why? Because it's like okay, because <laughs> you know like okay, dudes knock up a girl, then you know they don't want the child or whatever, so they, they dip. But you got the chick there. She's what two months? Yeah. And she still got a life, right? Especially if she's still if she hot, right? What's she supposed to do? Not not, 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 not go on a not, 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 not go on a TV show. <laughs> About your so about your uh, about about your your about, about no, your personal we life. All for, no, you're knocked up. We it's, all for nah, pregnant and no. dating, man. But to make that shit a show, a show like like there's people the that do it. There's scandalous show. women. We, we all know them that, that do terrible scandalous shit. Um, but I, th- I think that this is almost like this is this is almost worse than this uh, uh teen mom, teen and, mom. Uh, 16 and pregnant yeah that because uh, MT- yeah. i'm going on record and i just want to guess mtv doesn't just go out and look for these girls they have to submit to go on the show yeah. so that means you have to go out and get knocked up beforehand to get on the that's show that's probably why she did it she yeah. probably knew somebody on the inside mom, well, mom, i, I want to be on 16 pregnant me and justin <laughs> having a baby i said my time to mtv Dude, and there's like famous. now like a couple of them are in jail drug problems one's a porn star it's like, what are you selling these young girls? Yeah, man. What are you really selling these young girls? Like, what's really going on here? That was really like this is just like it's like you 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 turn these young girls into celebrities. You're giving them five, six figure salaries for this shit. What's going on in their lives is about reality TV nowadays. Yeah. But the reality is, if you paying these girls six figure salaries, then they're not really living in the reality that they was living in before that fucking thing. No. You want a reality show? Follow somebody that's broke and you're not paying them. <laughs> like there was a guy, Tourette's, Tourette's guy. You remember Tourette's guy? Yeah. Tourette's guy was this dude. It's funny shit. It's still one of my favorite things oh, online. He's a Kanye. He was still broke. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> don't film me. Don't film me. Don't look at me. All right? don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't look at me. Don't film me. All right? Don't film me. Don't film me. Don't say anything. Don't say anything to me. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't, said, don't, talk. don't talk. Just listen. I don't like you. Yo, let me, let, me, let me go on the record by saying this. When you get to the point where you're telling other human beings don't talk to you, you have lost it, man. I'm yeah, just yeah. going. I'm, yeah, he's yeah. lost it. I think you lost it, man. He, he's become a victim of his own. He's, yeah. he's a victim of his own success, and then marrying a um, a super whore or basically knocking up a super whore doesn't yeah, make it bad. Somebody who's I'm, famous for yeah, fucking. For, for, Someone who's famous for fucking and who's a reality who has a reality TV show because yeah. of that. They like the fame, they want the fame. The second, the one second that you're not getting any press, 
they would do crazy stuff. They would get their publicists, their handlers, everybody to go do crazy stuff to get them some, to get them in the press. But then on the other hand, they're acting like they start acting like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Don't talk to me. Don't do. Don't say nothing. If they weren't going after you and you weren't making no money, you would be asking them to come and take pictures of you. So stop that nonsense, craziness. The uh, Mark Anthony singing at the oh, All Star Game. Man. Did you see the the racism that exists yeah, on what Twitter? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Is he from New York? Yeah, he, he's from, from New York. York. He's of Puerto Rican descent. He's from New York. The dude was born in New York. I, it, it's <laughs> funny because I was watching it. I was watching it in Drew's crib, and uh, we, we, we were smoking and watching it. And um, and when he came out, the second I, I realized what it was, and it's like it's the seventh in the stretch. He's about to sing "God Bless America." I said it, I'm like, Twitter's about to go off on a racist rant for no fucking reason. I called it. I wasn't even on Twitter. I called it. I'm like, yo, Twitter's about to go off on a racist so rant. It was for no during reason. the game? It was during the game. He sang it during the game. Yeah. It wasn't he didn't sing I can't remember who sang National Anthem. Um but it, it was yeah, it was during the game. My lips are chapped, so uh, I'm trying to sorry. It was the uh <laughs> it was the seven it was uh, it was, it was during the, the seventh finish. Brother on the show. <laughs> he sang God bless America. He sang it good, but you know, the typical uh the typical American, I'm gonna go ahead and say. I'm not gonna single out any races because I'm pretty sure there were black people, white people, maybe even a couple of Hispanics on there. It was the all Americans. It was it the guys was that the believe Fox News. The, the typical American. You think it was them? Oh, I thought it was the the Spanish people that were going after him. Nah, it was. Nah. It wasn't. Nah, it was. Uh, oh. It was. It was. It was this they, stupid. They, calling they, him they Mexican. Was, like, calling him Mexican. I like, saw wetback. I saw. Oh, like, you can't even, like you can't even insult the man properly. Like, <laughs> yeah, homies from New York. They call so what does it say about Jerry Seinfeld and all them? Like, like what do you say about ain't Seinfeld? Jerry from, um, ain't he from New York, Queens? Jerry, yeah. So and now he live in the city. Right. So when he does something that's American, that he's that he's good because he's white. Is that a, is that how the, how it goes? No, how it is. If you white, you right. <laughs> if you black, you stay back. <laughs> <laughs> if you're brown, you lay. <laughs> what do they say about brown people? If you're a spick, hit the bricks. <laughs> If you brown, you stick around. <laughs> if you black, get the fuck back. <laughs> let's let's go through this now. It's what late July. Yeah. What films would you recommend somebody who's watching this to go see? Could be indie, could be major. Um, I haven't seen this film, but it's I heard Fru- Fruitville is a um, is a film that um that's making a lot of waves. It's actually had they're, they're adding theaters as as it as it goes along. If you don't know what Fruitville is, <clears throat> Fruitville is a film that was about the kid that got shot in Oakland by the by the cop. Um, I guess it was at the train station, and cops oh, man. the cops had had told him to sit down, and I guess <clears throat> he was on the ground already. I remember that. And um, the cop wanted to pull his uh, his taser, but he mistakenly used the right hand, and on the right is is your actual weapon. So he reached on the right, pulled his weapon. He thought he had his taser in his hand, and he squeezed, and he killed the kid. So that's what Fru- Fruitville is. So the, the director of Fru- Fruitville, I forget the name of the director. You can Google Fruitville. You'll see the director. But I think Forrest Whitaker got hold of that kid, brought him in, th- th- developed the film, and now it's in theaters. It, I think it won at Sundance, and now it's, it's opening up. It's in theaters. So Fruitville is a good one. It, it's probably good to say that a lot of cartoons are making it, like, are probably more oh, this man. summer. The cartoons are are more are bigger, Pixar bigger blockbuster dropping, hits than 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 the movies. Like Pixar usually drops one a year, man. They drop like three already this year. They have uh, the Monsters University, yeah, and Monsters they drop the uh, the plane. Good one. Cool me. Um, I think I think Turbo. I heard Turbo is doing really well. Oh man, yeah, um, that's that with the funny. snail, right? Yeah, yeah. And what's the other cartoon? There's another cartoon now. Now I want to see that planes, man. It's like uh, supposed oh, to be like Cars. Oh yeah. Pixar, yeah, man. I loved Cars, man. Yeah. Pixar loved did Toy Story, right? Yeah. But it's a lot of big movies that's flopping, like your Long um, Ranger. Yeah, After your Long Earth. Ranger, After Earth, but that I, I knew that one was gonna flop. Come on, like seriously, you could tell. That's the Will Smith one. Yeah. yeah, the Will Smith film. You could tell that one was gonna flop. I told people online, I was like, yo, this movie's gonna, this movie looks suck. That's my word, okay? This movie just looks suck. Just Brooklyn. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't want to, because I know we're going to end up talking about it. And I just want to, I want people to wait for it. So I have to say okay. for you people, it's just Brooklyn. Okay, well, I mean, I'm 
glad to be here. Uh, we had a great talk about different subjects. See, this is an another interview that wasn't really an interview. It was yeah, just it another was just conversation. <laughs> Veered off topic a few times. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's how it goes, is. though. That's Tell how you know great. it's personal. Here. Yeah. I'm Harry B. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Harry B. Sando. So if you want to Google me, that's how you find me. But Harry B. Film at Filmmaker Harry B. I can't give you my, my Facebook because... I get too personal on there. So it's at Filmmaker Harry B on Twitter. Uh, Sando Pictures with an S at the end. Sando will be spelled S A N D O. We're going to put a link Pictures. to Sando Pictures uh, on buttonroach.com. We're going to do that later on tonight. Yep. Um, I'm writing a couple of series. I've already sent him a couple of scripts from the uh, the other series that we got. I can't tell you the name yet, but it's, it's, it's going to be a problem also. So, yeah, we got a couple of things lined up. We're working. After I leave here, I got to go right because <laughs> I, I went to L.A. on vacation, came back. Now I've been backed up on like, like a week. So I'm actually directing another series for my girl, um, Norma Stanton, and it's called Lisa. So it's like Melissa, but it's Lisa. So uh, I'm going to be directing that. We're in pre-production for that. So look out for Lisa. So yeah, I mean, I'm doing a lot of things, man. I'm trying to stay busy. All right. And we're gonna we always gonna keep the uh, Button Roach audience informed about Harry B. Sando, man, because uh, whether you like it or not, you're part of the family now. Right? Yes, I'm family. It's better to be family than enemy. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, another big shout out to Pine Box Rock Shop. Of course, this here is where we at, at 12 Grattan Street yes. in Brooklyn, right off the L train stop on Morgan Avenue, Bush so, uh, Brooklyn, baby. Come good, out, have good, a drink, good enjoy drinks, yourself. Good fucking drinks. And uh, go shoot some buck afterwards because we're going to end up doing that shit later. They got the, the big buck machine. That's what's so great about this damn place. It's like yeah. wood everywhere. And you feel like you're in a fucking cabin in the middle of Brooklyn. That's then, true. Then you get to shoot animals digitally and not harm anything in yeah. real life. Except yourself if you like me and get upset. But That's and, a story and, for another and day. And the bathrooms are another story. Oh gosh! Oh man! You got oh yeah! I told him he, he Harry's gonna have to <laughs> explain to do later today for, to, for, for that bathroom. Oh yeah! That's a very oh, nice yeah, bathroom. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so wow, um, the bathroom! You got to come just for yes, the bathroom. The bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom is what gets them their reviews, man. People like the biggest thing people talk about when they come is the bathrooms. That shit is. We can't I want my away. I want my bathroom to be that bathroom, <laughs> man. I want to just use that bathroom. I'm gonna tell them to put a shower in there. Yeah. Now just come over here with a towel. Get shower there. <laughs> I'll wait till they open. <laughs> you'll, you'll stay in there. You'll, you'll clog up your drainage. With <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Button Road Show. Uh.